Hey, how's it going? Welcome to another game of Team Tactics. In this game, I'm going to be showing you a really in-depth version of how we do our Stone Age Rush. As stated in the first video that I made, the fastest Stone Age Rush, this is doing a rush as a team, so it's not just you by yourself. And we have a couple of uh, tweaks that we've done to our strategy so that it really does work for every game that you're in. So I'll get right into this game. Uh, you'll notice that I'm playing it off a Windows Media Player. That's because my recording is out of date. If anyone in the comments could uh, let me know how to fix this, I would be grateful. I've tried to copy the replay, but it uh, doesn't seem to be working. And yeah, the match is always out of date, like 12 hours after the game itself, which is quite annoying. Anyways, let's get right into this. So the first thing that you want to do is queue up your workers and if I'm far off from the resources I'll get myself the speed upgrade as well, but I don't need that. Usually I get more workers on the first house, build your first house of course immediately. Right then they were blocking them, uh, the other workers from building so just took it off. After your first house is built you can just have one worker continue on the second house. Of course you keep your scout moving about, you want to be searching for your opponents as quickly as possible but because it looks like I'm backline I'm happy to look about for fish. And up there my mate at the front just found the first opponent so we know where we're off to. Now in this game I got myself a warehouse just here, that's because my altar is pretty close to the resources, to the berries and to the wood. But in this situation, the berries and the wood are so close to each other that a warehouse lets me gather both wood and berries at a much quicker rate, especially because I don't have the speed upgrade for the workers. So in this situation, definitely get a warehouse before your fight pit. If you don't have this, if you have your wood and your berries near your altar, but not near each other, then I would get the fight pit first and then get your warehouse. And if your altar is really far away from the wood, then I would get the warehouse first again near the wood and leave, get a second one eventually, but get the warehouse near the wood first, get your fight pit, continue building houses. And once you have enough wood, get your second warehouse for the food. So once that's up and running, then I get my workers down here and build my fight pit. And I've got my scout looking for fish, because I see that I am indeed at the scene. At this point I've got about 8 workers on wood, and I've now switched my altars focus from sending workers to wood to sending workers to food. I now want about at least 10 workers on food at the very least. You're going to need quite a lot to get the leather shoes upgrade and to be able to produce both workers and warriors at the same time. Not to mention if you do get upgrades for your warriors you're going to need even more food. So if I'm at the front I will be getting myself a couple more warriors and a second at least possibly a third fight bit along with the stone cutter and the upgrades for my warriors as I'm backline I want to be spending those resources more on the economy so that I can do a second rush be it a light knight rush or a legionnaire or axemen or whatever I'll decide that uh, as the game continues but yeah it's still differentiates the strategy still differentiates itself based on whether you're front or back line. So I've now got 25 pop uh, population, so I want to start thinking about building my altar. I want to find a place for that. I see that there's some space down the bottom right that I haven't explored yet, so I'm about to send my warriors down to explore that and see if there's any animals that I should kill before I send up my troops to the front. Of 
course try not to have these uh, these idle villagers like right now he should be building houses so i'm probably gonna get housed because he is moving but i was too preoccupied in searching this area over here plus i saw the deer and i of course plan to bring them into my lands so i see that there isn't a land pass i can build a port there but i don't want to clear the alligators with my warriors because my warriors will definitely use that fight want to take some archers for that or slingers just range units in general and at this point in the game we're almost reaching the four minute mark i got housed for a short moment there so that definitely slowed down my warrior production but we're still doing pretty good and the deer that just came running through my base gave me a nice extra boost to my food i've got some warriors on that be sure to notice that if they are running through and use the bulwark to shoot them down and if the bulwark is in the way of like your wood supply or your berry supply i typically destroy it but first i will send my scout just to have a look at my immediate surroundings because maybe i can still get a deer before i delete that And yeah, at this point I've got my warriors up and running. How far are we in game? 4 minutes 30, so a little bit, 30 seconds late. But all in all, it's not that bad. And as you can see, my mates have already got their troops there up and running. They're sending them up to the front. Also getting the altars built. We don't get out altars as early as some other people do when we're doing this tactic, but we're going to be attacking first, so everything will uh, pan out in the end. Of course, you get your leather shoes upgrade so you can send your troops up to the front without taking too much damage from these wild animals that you see. And at this point, I'm upgrading, but I know that it in the time that it takes for me to upgrade I can train 10 workers so uh, I keep building houses until I have reached that plus 10 so right now I want to have about 54 maybe a 57 pop cap and we can see one of the allies has hit Bronze Age of Asia and he's trying to build barracks but because we're attacking so early, he's not going to be able to succeed there. They were planning on doing their own uh, bronze, age, bronze Age rush, it looks like. Oh, Hebs said just cut out there. Yeah, so we can see he was planning on doing his own Bronze Age rush, but we got there way too early with our own team swarm. And that first player is about to go. I'm guessing that he tried building his temple at the back line, but that probably slowed him down. And yeah, we all we had to do was destroy his beginning altar. We can see that the player at the top is building stables and he's gone Europe. So we're guessing he hasn't got the same defenses as the Asian player, as it takes far less resources to upgrade to Asia get yourself some defenses much easier than you can with Europe in the beginning so we send our warriors up there and we finished our upgrade so we're gonna be getting our food up and running these workers that we just temporarily sent to wood we can now bring on over and upgrade and get them all ready to work on the farm also at this point you should uh, start considering what you're going to be building next so we could be getting ourselves stables we could train those horsemen and go medieval of eastern europe and get the light knights fairly early on we could be getting ourselves axemen or legionnaires for that we would need to get barracks up and running we could get also barracks but get archers for our defense at the front line in case they send their own force of axemen or legionnaires or whatever or we could get ourselves uh, some ships up and running. We could go from the sea and 
take them out from there. We are placed right next to the sea and in this game I think that's what I decided to do because the land bridge was right at my allies base and my other three allies were going to be holding them off there pretty pretty easily. If I weren't going for the navy then I would also start building barracks at this point before I start upgrading all my houses. I would upgrade a couple houses but mainly I would be focusing on my barracks. Still as you can see now our army has reached the second player and as I said he went Europe so he hasn't got the defenses necessary. He should have built himself some towers at this point to protect his elder's house but uh, he hasn't done such and we're going to take out his entire economy. But instead this player just quits. Which makes it a whole lot easier for us. It's uh, <clears throat> it's quite difficult to take down the Elder's House of Europe. They are quite robust. So it's always easier if, uh, if the enemies just quit instead. Of course you don't want to linger, you want to keep on moving, there's no point staying there. <laughs> All I've got is one worker left, but we're moving him down anyways. And it looks like this player here built his barracks rather late, so the reserves haven't been able to build up yet. Which is one of the downsides of Asia. It's great once you have those reserves you can quickly train an army, but until they're actually ready, you're still going to be... Uh, you're still going to be open to an attack like this. So our warriors come on running down. We're making sure that we get our metal incoming. We want to get ready to upgrade. Now these units, these workers can also upgrade and get a new warehouse finally. They're walking way too great a distance at the moment. Still our economy, we're doing fairly well considering we're nine minutes in. And at this point we notice that the player on the left just quit. He didn't want to fight anymore even though he had just taken out the rest of our early rush. And when he quit I guess that also forced the last teammate of theirs to quit and that was that. Was pretty much the quickest game we've had so far. It wasn't even 10 minutes, it was, uh, it was really quick. And this is what you can do when you're doing the Stone Age Rush. Of course, if you're at the front line, I suggest going Asia. Don't take Europe because of the food problems especially. I would suggest getting yourselves the uh, poultry yard. You only need 10 uh, food to upgrade one of your workers. You can build the poultry yard, get some chickens out, and then your Stone Age workers can collect food from that. And once you've got that up and running, you can train yourself a proper Stone Age Rush army. So you can get your first 10 units along with the rest of your teammates, send them in and then get yourself your upgrades, of course. And with a couple of extra fight pits, you can train a good 30, 40 army uh, group of Stone Age warriors, send them in for our second attack and really just aim for the economy. You're not looking to destroy the Elder's House, but it's a uh, it's always nice if they quit the game or sometimes you can destroy the elder's house you know it depends so yeah thanks for watching and if you do have a solution for that recording problem then please let me know because i've tried copying the files and then bring them back in later and it still says the match is out of date so yeah i don't know what to do about that so leave a comment if you do know a solution like and subscribe if you want to see more of these videos and have a good one. I'll see you next time.